Hey engineers, welcome to LabVIEW Tips and Tricks episode 4. This one is going to be about reading and parsing in the files in the start of your application. So most of you probably have been developing applications which use a lot of constants to initialize some data or some constants to do the processing that you want to do in your applications. But there is also a way to provide these, this kind of uh, constant values to your application, but allowing also the user to change them before he actually runs your application. So this can be achieved with using any files. And based on the, based on the structure that I created in the previous lesson, so, lesson, so in the even driven state machine uh, tutorial, tips and tricks video, I showed uh, I have shown you how to create a even driven state machine and in that state machine I had uh, an initialized state so init state I have also added to that one a type defi uh, type defined cluster in this type defined cluster I have defined the um, data structure for my application and this is only as you will see here this is only a cluster that holds the random multiply value. I'm actually going to change this name because random multiply doesn't apply anymore. I'm going to change this to frequency. Yes, and save. And this is, this is the value of the frequency that we will use for our generation, for our waveform graph. Uh, simulation the the frequency is going to be taken from this from this data uh, cluster from our shift register but uh, we want to be able to initialize this uh, this value in the beginning of our application so i have already created a bundle by name function here in the init state and i'm gonna just take this function and create a sub vi around it so i'm gonna go to create and sub vi and if you remember, I have added a control F6 for that, uh, a control F6 uh, shortcut. So I'm going to use control F6. And here I have created a sub VI. I'm going to go inside of the sub VI now and I will save it as, let's say, initialization. Okay. And this initialization sub VI, I basically want this sub vi to read from an from a file specified on disk what is supposed to be the value of this frequency so to do this i will go to the programming palette and here to file io and to file uh, config file vi's and i will open a reference to my config file that i want to use and the config file that I want to use, so the name that I will use for this config file, will be, let's say, um, tester ini. And this file should be located next to my application on the hard drive. So I will create a path to this file, like so. And I will specify the name, as I said, it will be test ini. Well, let's make it like this. And I will provide it as a path to my configuration file. And uh, one important option, there is this option create file if necessary here. So if the any file doesn't exist, then the application will actually create this file for you. So the file doesn't have to exist originally uh, before you run this application. The file will be created for you. So let's go again to config file vi's. And here I will try to read a key. And the key that I want to read will be a, uh, a double numeric key. So I will select a double numeric key. And I want to read this key in a section that will be called, let's say, I will call the section generic settings. And the key name, let's make the key name exactly the same as the setting that we want to have in our application so frequency like so and we can we can wire this here 
like so and it's okay and now the important thing is we also have an output from this function the output is called found and we need to monitor this output because if this key is not found in our ini file we need to do something about it so the thing that I'm gonna do about it is I'm gonna provide a case structure here like so and I will monitor this output with a case structure and if the key value or if the key was not found in the ini file I will just write the default value that the key is supposed to have like so in the generic settings section let's just move this up a little bit here so we have a straight wire and the key name should be once more frequency so if the key has not been found in the ini file even though we found the ini file or created it actually uh, and even uh, but if we didn't find the key we will just monitor the situation and we will provide a constant value so I'm gonna click here create um, once more create constant and this constant value let's say should be 15 this is not important okay and let's wire it here so now if the key wasn't found then the value should be set to 15 and after that we can close the config file close the reference so we don't leak to the memory and and it's done and now we just need to provide this frequency that we either read from uh, the actual file or, or we uh, set it as a default in our application if the key was not found we can set it like this so from the false case we wire the constant and from the true case we actually feed through the value that we read from the file like so I also want to handle errors in this case, but I don't want to have any special error handling, so I'm just going to use simple error handler to inform the user if there was an error uh, while reading the ini file, then this error should be treated as a critical error, and it should pop up to the user a dialog box with the ability to stop the application. So continue or stop message so if there was an error error while reading the ini file then the application should pop up a dialog box asking the user if he wants to so stop or not okay and let's change the icon here let's make this icon init from ini init from ini file okay initialize from ini file and let's save this okay so let's test out this functionality we have this initialization from file uh, in our init state and this should read from an ini file if the key is actually available and if the key is not available then it should create the key in the ini file with the value 15 and then after that we can just edit that value and our application with will initialize with it every single time so let's uh, check the folder for our project and as you can see in the folder i do not have the ini file um, available but when i run my code like so it will initialize and it will go to idle now when I play the frequency of this waveform graph will be 15 and now let's stop the application let's go to the folder once more and as you can see the tester ini file was created here when we go inside we will see that the frequency in the generic settings section the frequency key is 15 and if we modify this value to let's say 5 now and save it yes I want to save and run the application once more then the frequency will be actually read from the file 
not overwritten with the value of 15. It will be actually read from the file with the value 5 and we will play a new frequency. So let's stop this once more. Let's delete the key from the ini file. So we have the ini file, but let's delete the key from here like so and save this. Now our application will not find the key. It will find the file, but not the key. So we should see the frequency being once more 15 Hertz. So let's run this. Let's play. And it is like we said. And the key in the ini file also was created and it was changed to 15. Okay, so this is how you use ini files once more. You need to open the reference to the file. It's best to use the application directory and build path with the name that you want to use. So you open the reference or you create the file. You try to read the key and if the key is not available, then you write it to the ini file with some default settings which you set here. After that, you need to close the reference and you need to provide the values either from the ini file or from the default value into your data cluster. Okay, so this is how you use any files. Please remember to comment and subscribe to the video and also remember to like if you would like to see episodes like this in the future. Thanks!